Biffle, Coach B, welcoming you to Program 531. It's July 3rd. That'll tell you if you're watching this live or not. And, as always, an amazing, wonderful, energetic, an entirely free broadcast for you tonight. We'll be talking about our writing system. I'm adjusting my screen right here, tightening it up, bringing it into clear focus. Red green marker writing. And here's the controversial question. Is red green marker writing the world's simplest there's the 3D effect, my friend. The world's simplest and most powerful writing system. I'm going to answer that question. Cards on the table before the end of the broadcast. But let's talk about whole brain teaching. Check it out. We are used in over 30 foreign countries. 60,000 members and climbing... 2 million views of our YouTube videos, 10 million, that's million, my friends, pages of free downloads. And as Biffy B says, we are one of the world's most popular websites. Yes, we are. That's who we are. Now, here's a couple more of my friends. Biffy Bluebird and his brother, Bobby Bluebird. Biffy Bluebird, welcome. Welcome. Thanks, Coach B. Good to be back. We've been away for a while. That's right, Biffy. We've been traveling around the country telling people about whole brain teaching. Well, I hope you had a good time, Coach. Biffy, I had a great time. But what if someone wants a copy of these slides? or professional development credit. Bobby, what's your answer to that good question? Easy breezy. Details are at the end of the program. So my friends, this is program 531, and we'll tell you how to get a copy of the slides of this program at the end. But let's talk about one of the hottest topics in whole brain teaching, WBT certification. Yes. Yes, my friends, you can be a certified, not just a certified, any old certified, but a WBT board certified whole brain teaching instructor. Online, free, open entry, open exit, design your own certification What's better than that? Let's give you some details here. Now, you're watching this program, and you know a little bit about whole brain teaching. You want to get started with certification. Big bonus is a certification. One, you're going to learn more about whole brain teaching. Two, you're going to join an elite group, and it is an elite group of dedicated teachers who are out really to change the world of education. Three, once you achieve certification as an instructor, Nancy Stoltenberg, our d director of WBT certification, sends you an award and a detailed letter of recommendation that can become part of your professional resume. And you know what? There are principals out there looking for WBT certified teachers. Let's look at this screen. Now, the question for tonight, what are the strengths and weaknesses of whole brain teachings red green marker writing system? Post your answer on the forum at wholebrainteaching.com under the topic which I've just created. Post your answer there. You write a good answer, you get 50 certification points. Got to be have college level literacy. You could get even more points for an outstanding answer. Let's look and see where you'd be posting these certification 
essays. Here I am on the home page. I'm scrolling down and I'm coming over right here on the forum, my friends. WBT certification webcast red green writing. That's where you'd post your little essay and start to climb the ladder towards WBT certification. Little bit more about certification. Here's the deal. It takes about 750 points. 700 points to be a board certified instructor and you can move up to be a board certified mentor, district presenter, regional presenter, national presenter, international presenter. Arlie Online, Southern Teacher, they're climbing the ladder towards board certification. If you have questions, just put them on the forum at wholebrainteaching.com. Now let's get on to the program, the reason why so many of you are here tonight. It's JJ Jive, one of our favorite instructors. What's the scamma jamma on red green marker writing? JJ Jive, good to have you here. Good to be here, coach. But tell us about this amazing writing program. I will, JJ, but I've got someone else here who has a question. This is one of my dear friends, Mrs. Connerly. What's the problem with how I teach writing now? That's the question. What is the problem with how we're teaching writing now? I'll open it up to my online crew. People online now tell me, what are the problems you're seeing with how you're teaching writing now? I'm going to drink some California Clear right here. Let me know what those problems are. Motivation says elementary matters. No joy, no golden thread of fun says Brainiac Teacher. Brainiac Teacher, good to have you online. We've missed you. Too much focus on mechanics and not getting good results. It's boring. Too many different levels of students. People aren't spending enough time teaching writing. Yeah. You don't have a plan. Let me show you what Biffy Bluebird says the problem is with teaching writing. Writing consists of a host of micro skills. Spelling, spacing, neatness, punctuation, capitalization, topic sentences, detail sentences, paragraph organization, focus, tone, audience, logical coherence, sentence variety, and essay structure. That's the problem. To write is not just to write. There's 10 or 20 different skills all in a way, different kinds of skills. And when we ask kids to write, we're not teaching them each of the teeny little skills isolated. So that's one of the problems. Here's another huge problem with teaching writing. As Biffy Bluebird says, we're trying to teach too many skills at the same time. This would be like showing students a basketball court, explaining the rules of the game, demonstrating all the basketball skills, and saying, now go play and don't make any mistakes. We're looking at a sports analogy here. You pick the sport, it doesn't matter. Any sport that is coached by a high-level coach will take all the skills in the sport and break them down into small little steps. In basketball, you learn to dribble right-handed, you learn to dribble left-handed, you learn to jump shoot, you learn the defensive position, you learn how to play zone, you learn how to play man-to-man, -man. you learn the inbound plays, you learn how to pass, you learn how to take a charge. I don't care what sport you're talking about, my friends. There's a lot to it. And that's why we have drills that are skill-specific. 
My friends, you understand what I'm saying, skill-specific writing drills? What I'm talking about is one skill at a time. That's the simplicity of red-green marker right there. Let's just practice one little skill at a time. Let's see what Biffy Bluebird has to say. Good sports instruction involves breaking complex skill sets into micro skills that are practiced over and over. Basketball practice or tennis practice involves much more than simply playing the game. So now here's our friend, Mrs. Connerly. Okay, I get it, but how should I start? Ponzi, you're right. That is one smart bird. Bivy Bluebird's coming back at you, my friends. Not so fast. The other huge problem with teaching writing is that student mistakes are not corrected when they happen. Students get papers proofread by teachers 24 hours later, if that soon. My friends, be honest with me. It's just me and you, teachers, in the trenches. Don't you dread reading student papers? Wouldn't you rather eat sawdust with a big spoon than read and proofread student papers because you read them, you're literate, and the mistakes just keep coming at you. It's as if you're in the ocean, like the Irish hero Cuculain, look him up, who fought the waves with a sword until it broke his poor heart. The waves of student writing pouring at you week after week, year after year, the same mistakes. Can Listen to me, my friends. I'm putting on my hat just to take it off. I'm taking off my glasses. This is a big point. It isn't you that needs to learn how to proofread, my friends. It's your kids that need to learn how to proofread. You show them all the mistakes 24 hours later, and you know what? They'll make them again. Yes. Do you know what? Are you, are you with me on that? Think about this. Think about what's wrong with how we teach writing. It would be like a basketball coach saying, hey, you made mistakes yesterday with your dribbling, shooting, passing, defense, rebounding, inbounding, stance, and playmaking. Don't do it again. You mark the papers up, five or ten different kind of marks, and you say, oh, that happened 24 hours ago. Look at this and don't do it again. That's not how we teach. Think about how we teach dance. My daughter was intensely involved in dance, in ballet for a while, so beautiful. The ballet instructor would show her exactly how to put her arm, how to set her feet, each little thing corrected in the moment of performance. That's when we need to fix the writing. We need to fix it as they are writing. So here's the two big problems. One, I just talked about. I said, we need to fix writing as the kids are doing the writing. And two, we need to take the host of micro skills and teach them one at a time. Can I get an oh yeah from my online audience? Is it making sense to you, my friends? I'm taking a shot of California Clear. I am just too excited. I have to calm down. Yeah, everybody out there is saying, oh, yeah, it's pouring in. Everybody's with me. Deb Weigel, I know you're with me. Arlie, sure, you guys have seen some of this, Budsley. Now, so now the question is, how, and here's Mrs. Connerly. I really get it, but how should I start? Now we're ready for red, green marker writing. Here it is. I'm going slow. Number one, give a time limit writing assignment, not a topic. For example, writing for 10 minutes. Number one is huge. You don't say to the kids, write a paragraph, write an essay, write three sentences. You don't say that. 
Why? Because if you give a topic assignment, they'll race through it, fold their hands, and say, I'm done. No! You give a writing assignment for a time. We're writing for 10 minutes. Kindergarten, we're writing for five minutes. High school, we're writing for 20 minutes here, my friends. You put the topics on the board. Be sure you got plenty of topics that they can never be finished in the time of. But number one, write for a certain amount of time. That'll solve some problems right there. Can I get some more? Oh, yes, from my online audience. I just want to check to see if you guys are really following me on this. That's right. Oh, yeah. I got an oh, yeah. All right. Good, my friends. Now, here's point number two. Focus initially on one skill. I'll tell you what skill to start with in a second. You're going to walk around the student desk. You're going to mark less perfect skills with a red marker and more perfect skills with a green marker. Two marks per page. One red, one green. Ask students to verbally respond, okay or thanks. All right. Here we go, my friends. This is, here are my markers. This is a red marker. This is a green marker. This is all you need. You're going to tell them to write, and you're going to walk around, and you're looking at their papers. When you see a bad example of the skill, put a red mark on it. When you see a good example of the skill, put a green mark on it. Then be sure they respond to you. Don't let them diss you with silence. They're going to say, okay, or thanks. Dot, dot, go on to the next page. Are you with me now? As they're writing, focused on one skill, you're looking and you're marking. Red, not such a good job of that skill. Green, oh yeah. Red dot, green dot. You're right, Deb Weigel. Now, what should we be marking? Check it out. JJ Jive. But what skills should I start with, Coach B? I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you a little story about one of the greatest coaches ever. He brought his outstanding basketball players into the locker room, and the first thing he taught them was how to pull on their socks. So if we're going to teach writing, let's start at the very, very beginning. And what is the very, very beginning? You know who I'm talking about, John Wooden. Here's the very beginning, neatness. Or if you want, holding the pencil. I love it. But neatness has got to come in there someplace soon. So you're saying, write for 10 minutes. All I want you to do is write neatly. I had a third grade teacher tell me the other day, we've given up on neatness. We're going on to other things. And there was a look of deep sadness in her face. My friends, is neatness important in writing? Uh... Do I have to take off the glasses and say, yes? If it's neat, they can see their mistakes, and so can you. And if it's neat, they're going slowly, with care, carefully crafting this creative linguistic enterprise. Glasses going back on. So... I hope we're back online. Well, we seem to be having some problems.
All right, my friends. Thank you so much. So let's get back to the issue. Neatness is number one. Then let's go on to capitalization. You know, my friends, I'm going to, we seem to have some problems here. I'm waiting to see if we can get back on. All right, my friends. All right. All right, I think we're back. Everybody good. Pause and play. Here we go. Wonderful. So, I didn't add anything new. Let's just look at neatness as number one. Neatness number one, just have the kids write neatly. Go around, and you see the logic of this. Red mark by the kids' messy word. Green mark by their neatest word. Here's the beauty of red marker, green marker. You're not judging the kid in terms of a hypothetical example of what neatness is. You're judging them in terms of what they're doing now. That's individuated writing instruction for each and every kid. Some kids are very neat. Make them neater. Some kids are not so neat. Mark their neatest word and say, give me more words like this. Personal bests, that's what we're talking about. Now let's look at the rest of the list. Capitalization. Let's just work on capitalization, my friends. Let's work on end marks. Let's work on word spacing. Let's work on indenting. Minimum sentence length is down there someplace. I think minimum sentence length even in kindergarten should be five words. Higher grades, minimum sentence length is seven. Maximum sentence length? I don't think kids even in high school should write sentences that are longer than 15 words. And I'd say seven to 12 words will get you through, will get you through elementary school. Then three to five sentences per paragraph. Sentence variety. Let's just talk about a few of these. So here's the idea. You pick one skill. You focus on it. The kid can have success because you're just evaluating them in terms of that one skill. If you're doing capitalization, then you're going to mark the neatest capital and the messiest capital. Are you with me? We don't want no bowling ball periods. We don't want no teeny tiny periods. We want a period that's exactly right. We don't want words squashed together. And we don't want words too far apart. We want some indenting, but not too much. One finger worth. One thing at a time. Let's just get the basics down. Give them some success. No hearts over the eye. Let's have one on just dotting your eye. You know what I'm saying? Do we get the name in the right place? Now, here, my friends, here's the deal. If we can just get one through eight, one through eight here, we've made a huge advance, and those are skills that every kid can learn. Now let's talk about something more sophisticated. Sentence variety. Would you please make this the law of your school? This will do more to improve the quality of writing than anything else. Look at, look at me. Two sentences in a row can never start with the same word. Just insist on that and the writing goes up. Whoop! a whole level. Yes, my friends. 
Now, let's keep going. I can tell from your online comments that you're digging where this is going. Now let's let's go on to some more advanced skills. Every sentence must have one adjective wiggly underlined. Now notice when we get to two sentences in a row cannot start with the same word. We're not talking about form anymore. We've shifted to content. And then Every sentence has got to have an adjective in it. Do that until you've got too many adjectives. And put a wiggly line under that adjective. Let's talk about one of the toughest things to teach. Toughest things to teach. Topic sentences. Let me tell you about topic sentences. I'm a college teacher. Here's the weird thing. Any sentence can be a topic sentence. I went to school the other day and played tetherball. I'm a big fan of John Wooden. Give me a sentence. It can be a topic sentence. The key is, what makes it a topic sentence is that you've got target word or words. The other sentences must hit those target words. So, kids write topic sentences and put a box around the target word or words. That tells them everything else must be about that target. Then, the sentences after have to have arrow words connecting to the target. Let's look at this. Every, number 11, every topic sentence. Now, what about slow writers who take forever? Well, you know what? If you have a slow writer who takes forever, then you tell that person, I want you to pick up your speed. You know what? I'll be back around, and I want to see you down here by the time I get around. You can individualize this. But if you have a slow writer who takes forever, and they're writing neatly, you can individualize this however you wish. Let's go back to this. Topic sentences and detail sentences. Here's what I say, 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Topic and detail sentences. I say... When you're focused on the one skill of topic sentences, you have a topic sentence with a box, detail sentence, detail sentence. There's arrows that go from the arrow words to the target word, physically drawing there. And then you look at it and you see, yes, that you've got the target words. Yes, those detail sentences contain arrow words. That's all we're thinking about today, folks. Topic sentences three sentence paragraphs, 10 minutes, topic, and arrow words. Now let's talk about real sophistication. Number 13, every sentence must contain an appositive, or a prepositional phrase, or a conjunction, or a complex sentence, or a compound sentence, or a compound complex sentence. Just figure out what the next level of sophistication is once you're down here six, eight, ten weeks, then you're down to the skill of writing more complex sentences. Show them what a prepositional phrase is, and all the sentences after the topic sentence should have a prepositional phrase. Show them what a positive is. I'm big on a positive. Every sentence must have a noun, and a positive is a phrase that adds information to the noun. I am a big fan of John Wooden, quote, comma, one of the greatest basketball coaches of all time. One of the greatest basketball coaches of all time is the appositive that gives us more information about John Wooden. You get your kids writing appositives, you're going to blow the state standard writing test out of the water. So that's how we can go from neatness to sophisticated writing. Here's Mrs. Connerly again. So just one skill at a time? Not quite, Mrs. Connerly. Pay attention, my friends. Here's Biffy Bluebird. Start with one skill, then introduce a new skill, then ask students to focus on the first two skills, then introduce a third skill, then focus on all three skills, and so forth. 
Here's the deal. Let's just work on neatness today. And next day, neatness, 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 neatness. We're talking about a year-long writing system. All right, now, I want neatness and capital, and no, we did neatness. Don't worry about that. Keep it neat, but now just work on capitalization. Work on your capitalization, neat capitals. Neatness for a week, capitalization for a week, 10 minutes of writing. And then come back and say, let's work on neatness and capitalization. You see how you scaffold it? One skill at a time. Whenever you introduce a new skill, that's the skill of focus. Don't add it into this list. Once they have the skill of focus down as well as they can, then add in the other skills. And oral writing, which there is a whole video on, will help this whole process a lot. All right, my friends, I feel the excitement out there. But what about my slower kids? We had that question. Here's Biffy Bluebird. As the year unfolds, individualize the scaffolding. Fewer skills for slower students, more skills for faster students. But I know what you are thinking. Because J.J. Jive thinks the same thing. The won't by slower students feel left behind. My friends, we don't want any kids to feel like they're left behind. And we don't want our best kids to feel like they're not challenged. Guess what? You know what's coming, my WBT veterans. Check it out. Not if you use the super improvers wall. The slower kids can actually climb higher than the faster kids. All we look for is skill improvement. This keeps the pressure on everyone. Let's look at the super improvers wall. This is not a program about the super improvers wall, but you should be using it. Notice there are 10 levels here. You can use any levels you want. You put the kids' names up there. When you see significant improvement, give them a star. 10 stars moves them up. Tasha, Tom, and Juan are at the rookie level. Bill and Dee Dee are at the phenom level. Here's the deal. Tie red, green marker writing into the super improvers wall as you do so much in your classroom. Your slower kids, when you see significant improvement, it's time for a star, my friend. So the slower kids never feel slower. Because the challenge is less for these kids, they can move up faster because what we're looking for is not academic ability, au contraire, taking the glasses off. We're not rewarding for academic ability. Is that shocking to you? Kids come in smart and they get A's and they start loafing. Kids come in low, they don't do well, they fade out. They should get no credit for academic ability, at least in some part of their education but they should get credit for effort and improvement. When I am the czar of U.S. education, which I think is going to happen soon, every report card in America is going to have a little insert where the kids are graded for degree of improvement. You're smart, buddy. you got to improve. You're having a little problem with spelling, you got to improve. That's all we ask. Improve across the board. Can you dig it? Tell me you can dig it. Give me an oh yeah. Talk to me. Yes, my friends, we're all on the same page. The same page, my friend. Here we go. Let's look at the next one. Screen. So Mrs. Connolly says, great. Do you have any more cool ideas? Mrs. Connolly, you're a blast. Here's Biffy Bluebird. One crucial skill that we should be taught is a pre-writing strategy called paragraph sketching. 
paragraph sketching. Here's paragraph sketching. Given a long list of topics, students construct paragraph sketches as follows. Topic sentence, apples. Detail sentence, healthy. Detail sentence, tasty. That's all I write over and over again. You then mark sketches red or green, depending on how well they divided a topic into detail sentences. Take any pre-writing exercise that you like. I really like paragraph sketches. Give me a single word that's going to be your topic, one or two words that's a detail, another one or two words that's a detail. Be sure those two details are different, but related to the topic, that's tough. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to mark with red. I'm really usually looking not at the topic sentence. I'm looking at the two detail sentences. Is each word different enough but connected? Let's look at my example. Topic on apples. Healthy is one thing. Tasty is another. If a detail sentence was sweet and tasty, sorry. Those are not two detail sentences. That's one and a half details. Mark them. Yes, three details and then a conclusion. My friends, Crystal asks, could you stretch the sketches to include three details and then a conclusion? Let me think about it. Okay, we're going to allow. We do have whole brain teaching police. They are monitoring the classrooms of America. But I'm going to call them tonight and say, let Crystal and her friends use three detail sentences and a conclusion. And I'll tell you what, you know what we say? It's your classroom. You see a way to fix it, fix it, tweak it, improve it, and then tell the world on the forum. We just put the stuff out there. We know it gets your creative juices flowing. This particular technique, I stole from Angela Macias, Dr. Angela Macias on our executive board. She came up with the idea. I'm tweaking it. You'll make it even better. Aussie teacher, I'm glad that you're giggling out there. Now, let's look at a little more complex. Longer paragraph sketches. Topic sentence, apples. Detail sentence, healthy. Micro detail, avoid the doctor. Detail sentence, tasty. Micro detail, sweet. You get the idea? Scrap Bunny, you can tweak the colors if you want. Goonie Girl, yes, you tell the kids it's right there on the board. This is the skill I'm looking for. Show them what they're trying to do. You'll get more success and they'll be happier. No more hide the ball, guess what I want. I'll tell you what I want. I want neat capitals. That's what I want. Or, I just want you to focus on making the periods the right size. Or, I want you to be sure no sentence is shorter than five words. Or, I want you to look at those sentences and be sure Two sentences in a row don't start with the same word. Brainiac teacher, you're so right, as you often are. Here's our next screen. Are there any other writing skills students could practice with red, green marker? Here's a bunch of them, my friends. You're probably going to want these slides tonight. More red, green marker 10-minute skills. Students neatly write as many adjective, noun, combinations as possible. Could you use red-green marker writing and just have them write adjective, noun, adjective, noun, adjective, noun? Are adjectives important to you? They're important to me. Is writing an adjective, noun combination a micro skill that needs lots of repetitions? Hmm, I think it is a micro skill. Have them write adjective noun combinations for five minutes. And then every sentence must have an adjective and a noun. Neatly, of course. Students neatly write as many three sentence paragraphs as possible. Topic sentence followed by two detail sentences. Students neatly write as many complex sentences as possible on any topic or compound or compound complex. 
Write as many sentences as you can using vocabulary words. And here is the humdinger. My friends, I should have said at the start of the broadcast, do not be standing up when you're watching this program because I am not responsible. Our insurance does not cover injuries that are caused when you faint from delight. Here's a fainting moment. Number five. Watch me. Students mark their own or a neighbor's paper with red and green marks. Give me a, oh, 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 yeah, baby. Yes. Give each kid a red and green marker. And let them start marking up the papers. Can they dig it? Aren't you glad you're sitting down? You see how this goes into self-evaluation? Peer writing? Just mark one item at a time? And any kid can do this. But what about five-paragraph college essays? What about five-paragraph college essays? Folks, here's the deal. I said at the start of the show, I would tell you, cards on the table, is red-green marker writing the world's simplest and most powerful writing system? My answer is, no hedging. My answer is, yes and no. Yes, I think it's the simplest writing system because it just involves red and green marks one item at a time. That'll get the simplest. But to get your kids to those five-paragraph college-style essays, you need something else. Let me just have a drink here while I think about what else you might need. What if there was something called the writing game that took students from the simplest writing skills to five paragraph essays. What if there's something like that? Well, my friends, there is something like that, and it's on next week, the writing game. If you link red-green marker writing with the writing game, then you may just have the world's simplest and most powerful writing system. Anybody out there going to be tuning in next week to see if I can back that one up? The writing game. Five paragraph essays and more advanced and also simpler techniques will be covered in the next broadcast. And I'll tell you what we might do. We might just do this you know, I might be in Ohio next week. I don't know. But whenever the next broadcast is, we might even include, sitting down, we might even include, as part of the writing game, a student proofreading module so that the papers would come to you already proofread. Can you dig that? Do you think we might include in that student proofreading module micro proofreading skills? Are you with me? Are you with me there? Are you tuned in to my brain vibes? I bet you are. So, you know what? I think maybe next week I'm in Ohio. Let's just talk a little bit about certification. There are the 10 certification levels. You're looking to try to get to 700 certification points. You get certification by writing about anything to do with whole brain teaching. Let's, let's go online. Let's look right here, my friends. There is a certification webcast. There are two certification webcasts. WBT orientation, WBT certification, and all about certification right here in this PDF. It doesn't look like a PDF, but if you click right there, you can 
page through it. If you go up here, you can click on it and download it. We'd love to see more people joining us to become WBT certified. Earning that letter recommendation that will be part of that would part of your professional resume. Southern teacher is getting close. Ollie's moving up. What could you write about? Write about anything that has to do with whole brain teaching. Look at all the stuff you can write about. College level literacy, my friends. Please read the PDF. It's online, free, at your own pace. Set your own goals. And not only that, we have some cool medallions you can win. Look at those cool medallions. You do a good job and we'll send you an electronic, 100% digital medallion. Yes, my friends. Southern teachers up to 820 certification points. She'll be running her own university before long. So for more detailed information, go to Scrib.com or just click on that PDF. But let's wrap this up, my friends. Great broadcast tonight. I loved your response. Ms. Linenthal says, Gosh, red-green marker writing sounds great, but how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Thank you, Ms. Linenthal. Glad to hear you're getting over your cold. Uh, you're right, Coach. You should have heard me last week. My, uh, my voice was a little froggy then, but I'm feeling better. Well, here's the answer to Ms. Linenthal. Go to wholebrainteaching.com, click on PayPal, and donate $5.31. 531 is a code number for this program. Before long, I, Coach B, will send you an email with a professional development certificate and a PDF copy of these slides. Here is the certificate with the fancy blue border. It has two sides. And don't forget next week, program 532. There's no time limit. For more cool writing techniques, we might even throw in some proofreading skills. And my friends, if you want a whole brain teaching conference in your area and you don't have one, it's your fault. You have been too nice to your administrators. Get those administrators in a headlock. Give them a real hard Dutch rub. Get them to send me an email at chrisbiffle at wholebrainteaching.com. Now, here is the special news for tonight, my friends. Let us go to our customized, customized Facebook page where you can find you can find grade level Facebook pages. Go down here. Right here, under Sunday's link, you'll see 13 people, many of whom have created grade book Facebook pages. Here's Jill Armstrong. She's online tonight. She's created a Facebook page for high school teachers. Grade 9. Oh my goodness. Let's click on all the comments. Here's a Facebook page for kindergarten. Here's a Facebook page for fourth grade. A Facebook page for third grade. Where do you go? Type in Whole Brain Teaching Facebook. You'll come to this page and go to the Facebook pages. Help each other out grade level teams. My friends, I am going to start awarding certification points to grade level teams. Oh, my friends, yes. And if you write about tonight's broadcast and do a good job, you could get 50 CP just like that with a cool digital medallion. And just for the online audience, if you include an extra paragraph about how you can use red-green marker writing to develop critical thinking skills, 
tweak that, I might drop 25 more points on you, but don't tell anybody. All right, my friends. If you want information, yes, Scrap Bunny, that's good. Next Tuesday, you know what? I'm going to have to check my schedule. I think I might be out of town next Tuesday, but check wholebrainteaching.com and we'll tell you when the next broadcast is. They're always going to be on Tuesdays. Nancy Stoltenberg, do you want to put your email address on in case they have questions about certification? Here's what we're going to do. Next Tuesday night, we're going to have a meet and chat. Meet and chat next Tuesday night. It'll be hosted by one of our whole brain teaching gurus. Perhaps I can talk uh, Nancy Stoltenberg into hosting it and uh, let's just talk a little bit if we don't have a program scheduled it's always fun alright my friends this is how we always finish up tell me who you are there's Nancy Stoltenberg Nancy Stoltenberg at wholebrainteaching.com Nancy is going to host the meet and chat next Tuesday night Deb unfortunately we wish she could have been in Ohio. We'll miss her. Sweet tech. Now, power to the teachers. God bless us all. Tell us where you're from. Let those names fly down the screen. Where are you from, my friends? Wisconsin, Maryland, Yuma, Arizona, San Jose, New Hampshire, Pittsburgh, Oklahoma. Bakersfield, Palmdale, Kentucky, Texas, Tennessee, Wisconsin, California, North Carolina, Louisiana, Pasadena, New Jersey, Walton Beach, Florida, Queensland, Australia, my friends. Thank you so much. We will see you next week for a meet and chat. Go ahead and stay online and talk to each other. I'm going to wrap this up and I'll join you online. Another great high energy. I felt your vibes tonight, my friends. We bless each other. Talk to you soon.